Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike Gilmore. I'm the Vestas Project Director for wind farms in Mongolia and uh, Northeast Asia. I'm a standing speaker today. Uh, the original speaker, Kuril Bhantara, was taken ill a couple of days ago. So I'm afraid you'll have to put up with me as a, as a standing. So, Tetsi Wind Farm. Um, in Mongolia, we're known as 76ers, as you can see. Now, 76ers refers to the fact that Mongolia is the 76th country that Vestas has erected a wind farm. So we're more than happy and proud to be known as 76ers. So, the wind farm. No wind farm gets off the ground without a client with vision, drive and perseverance. We're very fortunate at Vestas that our client, CEA, Clean Energy Asia, had those qualities in abundance. And we believe they made a, a very wise decision in appointing Vestas as the EPC contractor. Engineer, Procure and Contract, also known as the Turnkey Project. Um, now, the wind farm itself um, was the first wind farm in the South Gobi Desert. Um, it's a, a, a beautiful looking wind farm, I can say that because I was personally involved with it. Um, uh, the, some of the knock-on effects with the wind farm, which are very important, from the environmental point of view. As uh, you may be able to see there, we reduced the um, uh, 160,000 tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions. We conserved 110,000 tonnes of coal, and very important in the Southern Gobi Desert, we conserved 1.5 million tonnes of water. We're currently um, drilling a well for the local community out there in the Go uh, South Gobi. We need to go down 175 metres to find the water table. So it's pretty deep. Turnkey or EPC contracts involves investors managing the whole process through a number of BOP contracts. We refer to balance of plant, BOP, for anything that is not directly turbine related. So uh, the substation, electrical cabling, the civils works are uh, uh, BOP. Our contractors on the BOP were of course MCSI or MCS International who undertook the electrical works including the substation and uh, New Gobi Rentals, a division of NMS who undertook the civils works. So, just looking quickly uh, at the project, uh, I've skipped something here. Uh, seems to have a mind of its own. <coughs> anyway, let's um, let's look at, at safety. Um, number one, investors, safety and environmental compliance. Next, yes, that's fine. And safety is driven upwards by the workforce. Cannot be driven successfully downward by management. It must be the workforce that buy into safety and environmental compliance. So, how do you do that? Some of the things that we, uh, that we did at Taxi was we, we installed a system of rewards to our employees, whereby hazardous observations were, were actually encouraged and rewarded. Most contractors don't like to see the stats of uh, 432 hazardous observations, but each one of those observations mitigated an LTI, a lost time injury. And we did almost 1 million hours without an LTI because we uh, encouraged our workforce to embrace safety and embrace uh, compliance. 
And as you see there, uh, we've got a couple of photographs there of, of uh, our presentation, awards to our, to our workforce. Um, the teams were rewarded and individuals were rewarded for, the, for perhaps the number of observations or working safely. We had uh, an award each month for the, for the uh, safety awards. All went down very well. Uh, if you look at the numbers of site inductions, well over a thousand, and probably more importantly, the high risk uh, training, uh, 1,130. High risk would be things like working at heights, working in confined spaces. So that training that we gave to, the, to all our local employees, we, we were very proud of. We took 28 of our standard VESTA safety procedures, uh, we uh, translated them into Mongolian, of course, and you'll see an example of one there. And we issued those to the workforce, and they were well on display in our in our camp. Um, uh, don't want to bore you too much with details here, but the the point that I'm trying to drive at here is that this wind farm was constructed by Mongolians for Mongolia. If you look at the large numbers of people involved, very few expats. In fact, for most of the project, there was only one expat on the site, and that was me. Obviously, when we go to the erection of our turbines and the commissioning of them, we need to bring in specialist expats. Uh, but other than that, it was proudly done by Mongolians. And in fact, some of those guys I've still got working for us on the Senshen wind farm, and some of them I've now got working on uh, one of my projects in Thailand. And in fact, we'll see our, our table there, two of our, our, our girls that are helping us in our booth have both been trained in India, and one of them, our quality uh, engineer, has recently been in China, escorting our clients through our production facilities in China. So it's a developing uh, training and skill base with our Mongolian people. Uh, illustrates almost one million injury-free or LTI-free um, hours. It's a, that's a lot of hours, people, to go without a, a, an incident. Um, timeline, again, we're very proud to say that this project, from the initial signing of the contract in uh, September 16, through to the um, State Commission approval in September 17, 12 months, we designed and constructed a wind farm in very harsh conditions in Mongolia, as you all know, in 12 months. And three months of that is a winter close down. So that in itself is a, a record with investors. Oh, now look at that photograph. Isn't it beautiful? That's the substation, the Texas Wind Farm, constructed uh, by MCSI, uh, a couple of the stats, 34 kilometers overhead transmission line, 21 kilometers of underground cable, and look at that great photograph. Now we come on to, um, to my favorite, Sybil's Works, I'm a civil engineer. So Sybil's Works, um, over 7,000 cubic meters of concrete went into the wind farm, all produced on site locally, of course, with obviously local materials, local uh, workforce, and we produced over 7,000 cubic meters of concrete. Each base has about 400 cubic meters of concrete. Um, in that is uh, also a, a, another Vestas record, we managed to construct two of these massive bases, so that's 800 cubic meters, two of them in a 24 hour period. It's a record within uh, the Vestas family, Vestas community, and we're very proud of that. 
there's over 22 kilometers of, of site roads that we constructed on site and all went off extremely well. Can somebody skip to the next slide? Ah, there we go, got you. So we see here the, um, the camp, we built a camp in the middle of the Gobi Desert to uh, uh, house about 200 of our staff people. If you look at the uh, second cabin on the right at the back, the middle door, that was my cabin. So we had a facility there for a camp, all went very well, canteen of course, hot food, showers, um, air conditioning, as you probably know in the, in the Gobi Desert in the summer it's very hot, plus 40, in the winter it's very cold, minus 40. So quite a swinging temperature. Um, the, the building is the O&M building, so that's where we do the maintenance. Vestas maintain these uh, beautiful turbines uh, uh, under contract to CEA, and the building that we see there is the O&M building where most of the maintenance will take place. This is a 25-year facility, so the buildings, of course, have to be constructed to, to last through those harsh conditions. Ah, there we go. So, uh, we have a turbine. Well, the cross-section, well, we had a turbine, it seems to have disappeared. <laughs> so, there we have a cross-section of the turbine. Uh, these are known as V110. Now, the Vs, of course, Vestas. The 110 refers to the diameter of the blades. So, the swept area, the circle of the blade. 110 meters so each blade roughly 55 meters long that's a long blade and about four meters high narrowing to about 400 millimeters uh, the tower sections three tower sections hub height as we call it 80 meters the tower sections combine weight of 120 ton or thereabouts and of course um, state-of-the-art technology um, as I said, the base contains plus or minus 400 cubic meters of concrete. Uh, it's quite a lot of concrete. Beautiful lay down area. Uh, transportation all went off perfectly well. We didn't damage a single blade. If you could imagine transporting a blade that's 55 meters long, we didn't damage a single blade. And of course, the, the picture with our uh, camels in the foreground, uh, that's uh, all around Vestas at the moment. Uh, Vestas are a Danish company. We don't have very many camels in Denmark. So, uh, a little bit about Vestas. Uh, as you see there, we've got, uh, we're present in 38 markets worldwide. As I've said, 76 countries, 38 markets. I think it's fair to say that we're a, a world player. Some stats on our, our numbers, nearly 24,000 employees, um, of which I'm one, a small cog in a big machine. Uh, we look at a couple of our uh, photographs, completion, a uh, great thing now, drones. Uh, many years ago we didn't have that facility, but now we've got some really good uh, drone photographs and of course the internal of the uh, subsection. Very important piece of equipment, of course. Um, very important, the training of, uh, of this group. As you see, we sent them to Chennai, which is one of our Indian uh, offices, to undertake some training. The installation team that you see, uh, we've got one supervisor in the middle, a German guy, and the rest are locals. That same group of guys are now on Sencha and were trained um, in Chennai. Uh, this is the, the team that went to Senchen, going up the ladders to the first turbine that we erected there. And the guy on the right, Muggy, one of our technicians, that's a photograph of him working in, in Japan. He was also trained on uh, one of my previous projects in the Philippines. Uh, top class guy, still working on, um, on Tetsi as a, as a service technician. Uh, some of our training of our staff, as I spoke to you earlier, uh, in China, and the, the guy on the right is on one of my projects at the moment in, uh, uh, in Thailand, a project called Ron Cloud. He's a civil engineer, uh, on-on. Uh, so we're, we're 
not only training now people locally, but we're using them in, as part of the Vestas family overseas. And that's the end of the presentation. I'd like to thank you all for listening, and hopefully you enjoyed that brief presentation. Thank you.